All right, folks, we're back for the not quite year in review, but it's the last <laughs> Starbase summary of 2024. I'm John. Let's watch the video and see what we can figure out is going on out at Starbase. Kicking it off here with some views uh, just a week ago, 10 days ago, it looks like, all the way back with the booster rolling out to Massey's to begin its test campaign. They still take them out there for the cryo testing at Massey's. Now, at Massey's, they don't have a place where they can static fire boosters, comma, yet? Question mark? We'll see, but we know that they uh, brought the booster over there and then did some testing with it. Back at the assembly yard, we see that they're doing some flame deflector construction for Pad B. It's that little hockey stick looking part across the bottom. Not really very interesting every time we see it there, but keep an eye on what's going on. There's the second OLM. Work continues on it over there. And then back over this way, a hot staging ring. The holes there in the side of that piece of uh, stainless steel. Both hold the entire ship on top of the booster and also let the hot exhaust gases escape when the ship lights its engines, so literally while still attached or on top of the booster. That's where the exhaust from the ship goes out the sides. Here we go over to the second tower, and we've been calling this the chopstick jig, that temporary structure they're going to use to, looks like, assemble the chopsticks and attach them to the tower. This, of course, in the foreground is the first tower with its chopsticks. Looks like we've got to load a bucket. You know, sometimes the uh, scaffolding rides in buckets like that. I wonder if that's a scaffolding bucket. There's a new chopstick lifting pin. The new design just above you can see the little catch scrape things there. And there's the chopstick lifting pin socket waiting for its pin to be installed on the other side. Mary got some great close-ups of what's going on there. Here's work continuing on the orbital tank farm. We could just say that it's the tank farm. Well, it still hasn't gone to orbit. Will soon. 2025, that's a thing that's happening in 2025. Starship to orbit 2025. Write it down. That's not really that far of a stretch. That's not like a long bed or anything. There's some concrete work happening. Those massive concrete positioners, pumps, I guess you could say. More work over at Pad B. You can see some details on the chopstick jig there. This looks like weights. What, I didn't quite catch that before that went down. What was that? Well, what is this? It says it's likely a ship aft flap. Say that ten times fast. Mark does an oversized load here on the side of the road. Mary getting some up-close shots of that. All wrapped up in plastic. Oh, look at this. Look. I love it when the clouds are going by in the background. What a nice, like, lighting and shot for the booster over at Massey's. What is this Jack? Like in a Zodiac boat on the river driving by at night? I feel like Jack's in a James Bond movie here. He gets out of the mouth of the alligator, and then the alligator, like, closes, and they think it's a, but it's not an alligator. It's actually a mini-sub made by MI6. MI6? It is MI6, isn't it? Anyways, Jack is not in a James Bond mini-sub. Jack is in uh, the Rocket Ranch's boat, river skiff, that they use to go up and down the river. So, massive thanks to Rocket Ranch for uh, giving Jack a ride by the Massey's test site with the booster there. It's a cool, unique angle. This is going to be Tower 1 because it has the little weather station up on top of it. All the cameras mounted in the upper left-hand side there. Looks like we're hopping back. That's the same lifting pin before. I don't see any difference there from that previous shot. Looks like they haven't installed the uh, rest of it. Or have they? Maybe maybe I need to go back and A-B test those two things. Y'all will do that for me. I rely, I rely heavily on y'all to tell me when I didn't see something correctly. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. There's Ship 35's nose cone heading over to the second mega bay. Just sneaking in through the door. Look at the doors blowing in the wind. Those fabric uh, garage doors. As always, buses coming and going. People walking back and forth, riding bikes. It's like a crane in the foreground there. And then a bus. And then the doors close. Neat. Okay, alignment pushers moved. There you can see things going back and forth laterally across the top of the chopsticks there. There you go. You can see them sort of all the way out to their extent. Are they going to retract back in? Nope, they're just going out. And here's a time lapse from a little tough view here, but it's the cryo test. 
you can see the ice forming on the side. God, when you get that nighttime contrast, you could really see the ice there for a second. But uh, continuing on with its testing over at Massey's. More shots of the second OLM. I'm not sure what's going on with that gate wiggling back and forth, but whatever. <laughs> We've seen this one on occasion. Just looking up the uh, line there at ship 20 and the cryo test stand. Some people in the background taking some, or in the foreground, I guess, taking some shots as well. Here's Mary catching some more booster 15 cryo testing. You can really see the frost line going up as the humidity in the atmosphere freezes onto the outside of the tin can. Well, stainless steel can, but what's the difference really? Well, there is a significant difference between tin and stainless steel, but whatever. Uh, the, frost, the frost forming on the side of the booster there. And then after a successful test campaign, we see it returning back from Massey's in a very rare, by the way, daytime roll. You don't often get to see daytime rolls. A lot of times it's night and it's all dark. And so it is a special treat to see one of these things moving around in the daylight. They're quite elusive species, uh, preferring to move under the cover of darkness. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they can't really hide. It's not like they can slink through the bushes or anything like that. So they have to have darkness if they're going to move anywhere. But uh, we usually see them whatever time they go. But nice, I mean, fantastic lighting there when it comes in in the day. And Mary setting up to catch that thing as it goes back in for some additional checkouts after the, what, <laughs> after it's testing. What is a booster hat? We're talking about the top part of this. And it looks like the, the grid fin holes are closed out as well. It's like a structure. They don't have an entire clean room for this, but they still need to keep fod and sand and dust and salt water out of the top of that thing, apparently. And so they've designed a booster hat that they put onto it. Anyways, here we've got the uh, flame diverter again. You can see it's not quite only a hockey ship shape, it's hockey stick shape. I'm going to speed run a couple of these, it looks like. There's some parts at the production site. You can see the ship lifting squid. Yeah, there you go. The yellow part there. It's just sort of like in storage now. Does this say booster tribe in the background? <laughs> Uh, the way they have some of the stuff labeled is interesting to see. There up close we have Tower 2, and you can see the red jig as well. Booster 15 moving around over in Omega Bay. Sneaking a peek inside the Star Factory. Now in the middle of this shot, there's something interesting. Let's see if we get some close-ups of it. Yeah, there you go. The HLS Airlock Prototype. I know Jack and Mary both got some shots of this. But uh, there's a little hatch on the side, and it's painted white. That's how you know it's for the, S the uh, HLS program, as opposed to the raw stainless steel on everything else. White denotes HLS. I made that up, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb. And then the typical parade o nose cones looking through the windows of the Star Factory at night. The conveniently installed windows allowing us to see into Star Factory. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're, you're looking through the windows. Or maybe they don't want you to see that. And I'm like, they installed them. Like, come on. They put the windows in. What do you think? They put the windows in and then they didn't want us to see what was in there? There's other ways to get better natural light than those windows, although they are south-facing. But anyways, moving back over to the launch mount. What are the chances I can just start saying launch mount instead of orbital launch mount? I mean, work on the launch mount continues. It doesn't really have the same ring to it. An LM. I don't think LM's going to stick <laughs> in any event. All sorts of different uh, views here. Close-ups, videos, things getting ready. Those, cam those look like cameras. I always like seeing cameras. <laughs> you know how it is. They're actually riding. That's the chopsticks carriage system they were sort of riding there. Got a uh, bobcat. Is there a better word for this? What is it, like a skid steer or something? A skid loader? I'd call it a bobcat. It's like a Kleenex. Like everything in that little form factor is called a bobcat, even though they're not all bobcats. Back me up on this if you've ever driven a bobcat. <laughs> Got some cranes doing some work on the OLM, continuing to lift up pieces and take down pieces and... It's getting a lot of attention over there. A lot of people really wondering how this thing is going to move. It's massive. It's going to be ridiculously massive and ridiculously heavy. 
And uh, seeing this thing, clearly they're not going to launch rockets from here. They're going to have to move it out to the second tower. And so how they move this thing in the clearance required to get it down the road, I, I foresee some removal of uh, street signs in the future. <laughs> they have to lean those street signs over so they can get that thing down the road. There's some cryo pipe assemblies being moved around. Nice fiddly little details. It's, all, it's, it's cool because it's kind of containerized, right? It's like, oh, we built all this together, and then we move it as one unit. Look, we're putting it here on the truck. So we assemble this in the air conditioning. Got the C, con the C channel and the control boxes, electronics, and everything, like in one unit, and then they just pick it up with a forklift, put it on a truck, and roll it to where it needs to go. That's cool. I like that. We do that with some of our boxes out at the uh, sites. Like Dan will build them in advance, and then they're all wired up and, and ready to go internally. You just take them and you integrate them with the rest of the site instead of building everything from bare wire at the site itself out in the sand and heat. Neat. Grid fin's moving. It's, it's a good catch. And then we've got some work over on a quick disconnect area here as well on the booster it looks like yep there you go booster transport stand rolling around there's uh, closing up the last of the holes there yeah look at this it's just so fiddly like imagine you have to have this automated system that connects and disconnects and reconnects those pipes and it's not just like oh plug in one pipe and you're done plug in two pipes and you're done um i just spent a couple days fixing sinks and faucets at my mom's house and I think they're original with the house. Uh, it's tough to get plumbing to connect and not leak when you're like under your mom's sink. Imagine having to get the plumbing uh, <laughs> to connect and not leak automatically <laughs> when you're pumping cryogenic fluids through it on the launch pad, on the beach, near a hole in the ground with the sand dunes all around and around. Anyways, booster rollouts. Here it goes. By, by the way, while I was at mom's house, I actually found uh, my childhood home, right where I grew up, my lowly worm. I had a lowly worm stuffed animal as a kid, and it is still there at the house, like many of the things that were at the house when I was a kid uh, many years ago, like 40 years ago. <laughs> but it's there. It's still there. I took a picture of it. I, I, oh, I meant to give it to him to put at the end card of this video. Oh, geez. Anyways, I did have the uh, Richard Scary lowly worm. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it for 2024. As always, thank you for hanging out with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe or whatever, because we do two of these a week, unless you noticed we skipped one for Christmas. But it's the holidays. Thanks for Mary, Jack, and the Starbase Live operators for catching all that footage, and we will see you nerds later. Happy New Year, folks. <laughs>